there's so there's there's always something in everything, isn't it? So that that's what we're gonna yeah. do. Sure so what what we're gonna do now, I, I want us to I, I to be honest with you, I don't want Pete to say anything at this stage because he, he's gonna be actively involved when we look at Uffington Horse. But um how many of you have sort of come across the concept of ley lines and how many of you sort of give ley lines any credence how many of you uh, understand what a ley line is we're going to start as it as you're up online steve uh, what do you think about ley lines um i'm naturally a skeptic but i i would like to know more i don't pretend to know very much about it but from what i've heard it doesn't sound i'm not convinced put it that way right okay now pete you're not allowed to speak because pete pete is the one pete is the one which will knock over the um, apple cart on this one. What about you, Bill? You're, 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 <coughs> a, guy, you're a guy who goes metal detecting. You believe in things like that. So what about you and ley lines, Bill? Again, like Steve, I don't know too much, but I imagine there's sort of um, lines of some sort of energy, energy lines, which connect um, initially pagan sites, then church sites or sacred sites. Um, there's a lot of people who believe on them, actually. And the dowsing goes on quite a quite a bit. And in fact, when I was at um, the uh, Lytham burial chamber a few years back, there was a group there actually doing it, and they 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 convinced that the ley line went through um, the burial chamber, and they're at the far end of the field doing other things, you know. But uh, yeah, um, I'm not entirely convinced, but I'm prepared to listen. That's a good one. And actually, you mentioned Saint Lytham's. We're going to be yeah. looking at uh, Tinkinswood, so um, that that sort of nearby. Roger, what about you and uh, what about you, what Roger? What about you and our uh, wonderful ley lines? What, what what do you think about them, please? I'm not certain that there's any uh, confirmation about centers of energy in this. So I'd like to see what you've got to say. Okay, no, that that that, that that's a good way of not getting certain. around it. That, that that's that's a good way um and i think pete I, i'm deliberately not wanting you to say anything because you know exactly yeah. where this is going we had a conversation yesterday um richard anything you would like to say um yeah i'm a bit sort of either way on them i've read a few books and things you know relating to ley lines and sort of when tree hills and this sort of thing you know where there's a solitary tree on the top of hills it's sort of you know, so convince me, Carl. Convince me. Uh, no, actually, um, <laughs> no. That that that's that's something I'm not going to do because that that would mean that I'm going to be preaching at you. I'm I'm not I'm not going to do that. Um, but what what we are going to do? The whole point of this, the whole point of what we're doing, is, is trying to understand uh, different concepts in archaeology and um, different post-processionalist ways of looking at archaeology and so on and we're going, we we will actually we will actually come down we will we will actually be looking at dousing um, in the future as well and and we will go back to the um the roundhouse that's being constructed here as well but we're also there, another building's going up at the same time so uh i might be focusing on that one for a few weeks because that that's the one that's going to be completed sooner so i want I, what I want to do, right, I, I want to lead Pete into this conversation and, I, and uh, me and Pete can have a little bit of a discussion. Then we're going to look at what my text says about ley lines, a chap by the name of Alfred Watkins. And then what we're going to look at is West Kennet Long Barrow and uh, the, set, the line of sight bit, right? Ley lines, line of sight, th there's a similarity there. And we will then come on top of Tinkinswood Burial Chamber. And Tinkinswood Burial Chamber will be something that we'll be looking keenly at um, in mm. quite a few months' time in regards to the British prehistory and, and the other prehistory stuff that we're actually doing. So I'm going to get that up there. That's ready. We're going to visit somewhere where we, well, where we were last week. And, and then um, Pete will... Pete will jump on me, so I, I've got to, I've got to set the scene. So this, this is what we've got to do. Um, so, so Pete is the one amongst all of you guys who is not the skeptic. He, he is one that is into ley lines. So, 
what we've got is we've got the Uppington horse. And the one thing, the one thing that we were very much into last week when we explored the Uffington horse was the sense of being able to see something, the overall context of something whilst you're on the ground. And when we looked at the Nazca lines last week, um, you can't see these things on the ground. You can just make out a white line that you follow and it's the same as the Uffington horse. Now, when we were when we went to see the Uffington horse, I think Bill was there and Roger was there, and I think there was a nice little group there. We we went over to Uffington Castle, um, the the bank and ditched enclosure above Uffington Horse. But we've got to put a little bit more context into this, um, and the context is. There you can see where we're going. And you've got the head of our wonderful creature over on the left here. And then we went for a walk all the way over to that little gap in the defences. Now, the interesting thing was, as we were wandering from the, the head of the horse to that gap, Pete brought out his dousing rods. Um, no, I didn't. What what did you do, Pete? I can't remember. So, Pete, what I'm going to do now? Michelle is... got Michelle got the dowsing rod. She picked it up and Good. she had it in her hands. Yeah. Right, yeah, Pete. Pete, hang on a minute, Pete. You're doing being too pedantic. You are. Um, dowsing rods were there. So, so Pete, let's put this into context. We walked from the head there to that little gap. Explain a little bit more for us, Pete. Well, we went, we went inside the, the port and say, Michelle had picked up this uh, this wide twig. I, I had used dowsing, dowsing before, looking for uh, subterranean pipes and hollows. And that had been successful. But And so I asked her to pass me the dowsing rod, which she did. I put it in my hand and it, Break down immediately in the right in the gap of the door of the gateway into the into the fort. It went and directly into without there, my yeah. control, I couldn't stop it doing it. So you just followed into that gap there that you yeah. could see yeah. into, we into that gap. And we were looking out to outside. Yeah, exactly. So th this this is exactly what happened that day, um, and the one thing about. The one thing about this whole landscape is that we don't just have the Uffington horse. We have Uffington Castle and a little bit in the distance. There's also something called Wayland Smithy. Now, what, what, we are, what, what I would like to do today is l look and explore um, from from various from a couple of angles, not various angles, because we haven't got a massive length of time tonight. But it would be good to sort of try. I, I think one of the one of the things involving this idea of ley lines. So that gap there, that there, is is like a little bit of a um, an entrance in, into the back mm. of Uffington Castle. And what you can see, you can see all these little quarries here. Those little quarries there are the chalk quarries that are used to gather the chalk to so that they can actually re-white the Uffington horse. Mm. So there you go across the field. Now, one thing I'm going to, one thing I'm going to chuck in here as well, right, um, as this is one thing that I wasn't going to do today, but I've just realised I have to, is that we need to go over to, for example, um, Glastonbury Tour, right? So I'm just going to chuck this in here, and my my first my first experience in regards to ley lines uh, was actually going to Glastonbury Tour. Now you've heard about the saying, "All roads lead to Rome." All ley lines lead to the top of Glastonbury Tor. I used to visit Glastonbury on a regular basis with a small group of friends, James and Emma. 
And we used to go in all the shops um, in Glastonbury. And there was this absolute obsession with ley lines. The whole landscape was crisscrossed with ley lines, everything linked. And there's so many different features around Glastonbury. It would blow your mind. But that is a, a subject for another day. Now, what I would like to do is directly hone in on this guy, Alfred Watkins, The Old Straight Track, the classic book on ley lines. Now, Steve, Bill, Richard and Roger may think I've gone away from academic sense to ac uh, academic madness by bringing in ley lines. However, I am going to tell you something. Years and years and years ago, and Peter might know this bloke, and I've never mentioned him, a chap by the name of John Harvey. He actually used to work uh, for BP, right? John Harvey, he lived on Pontypridd Road. And the, the year is 1994. And I was undertaking a full-scale archaeological excavation at a medieval village outside Cowbridge. Hollybush Farm, Lankford's Farm, we used to call it. And he come along one day. He was he was helping me with the excavations for about a year. And then he said, I want to get my dousing rods out. So he got his dousing rods out. Now, he wasn't too much into ley lines, but he was very much into his dousing. And he would he would talk about different things lining up and, and um, water wells and various things on, on the archaeological site. And we used him one day to try and find some burials and he just couldn't find them with his dousing rods. And lo and behold, when we, wherever we were excavated and he was saying, there's no, there's no burials there. There's no burials there. We tried to find a cemetery. We couldn't find it associated with the old church of St. James outside Cowbridge at Lancovian village where we were excavating. And again, he introduced the idea, the idea of dousing rods. Now dousing rods, straight lines, it's all linked in with this ley line, um, area. Now, dousing rods have been a, around for a very, very long time. People have been dousing. It, it, it's an old twig. Let's go out and down, douse. Now, what I would like to do um, is, is mention, and we've got a few people online as well, and, and somebody saying that uh, they, they've worked alongside a thing and a horse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention these ley lines in its raw power. Now, I, when, when, I, when I started thinking about this ley line thing for, for tonight, right, I started to think, right, people have been studying ley lines for centuries. However, ley lines are straight alignments drawn between various historical structures and prominent landmarks. Roger. The idea was developed in the early 1200s. No, in the early 1900s. No. Um, um. Yes, in the early 1900s, um, ley lines were developed as, as you know, it, we, we didn't see. I thought ley lines was something that people had been looking at from um, from the 1100s or the Roman period or something like that. But when I started getting into it, it's, 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 a, it's a more or less a new thing. So the beginning of the 1900s, people started looking into ley lines and alignments. And I just thought this was really strange. I just thought it was a well-established thing like dousing rods, but it wasn't. It, we, we've been looking at ley lines for only about a hundred odd years. So ley line believers, four of you ain't, and I, I'm going to go on the sideline. Ley line believers um, argue that um, there are alignments um, that between, between prominent landmarks and between barrows like this one and so on and so on. Um, this is this has moved into to various um, organizations such as Earth Mysteries. Uh, it's an um, it, it's it's a it, it's a pseudo science. It's a pseudo archaeology. L lots of lots of archaeologists would dismiss ley lines completely. But but there's an individual that comes into this that's quite prominent, and actually he he goes into loggerheads with a notable archaeologist back in the 1920s. But Alfred Ro Watkins no doubt publishes this book. Tell you what, many people have said to me, they've said, oh, why didn't you write a book on King Arthur? Because it sells. Tell you what, if I wrote a book on ley lines and took it down to Glastonbury, I'd sell out in a week. But, but 
but you know, I, I want us to make sense of this. Now, when we when we come to the end of this this session today and we look at Tinkinswood Burial Chamber and we look at West Kellett Longborough, you might get an idea that there's something in lines. Not specifically ley lines, but there's something in the idea of line of sight. So I'm trying to put an academic um, uh, trait on this. The idea of lays, the ley lines, the lays, as straight tracks across the landscape. So, so straight alignments, not necessarily actually physical tracks, but straight alignments was put forward by an antiquarian. There he is called Alfred Watkins in the 1920s, obviously. This book has been republished and it's been republished and it's been republished again. This this book, this book is um, the old um, straight track. He argued that straight lines could be drawn between various historical structures and that these represented trade routes. These represented connections um, between various um, ancient groupings in, in Britain. Now, one thing, one thing, this is rather interesting. This is a rather interesting point. I'm not trying to um, um, gorge something out of that sentence, but what I'm going to say is that as an archaeologist, I, I have got to go on to the level that very few Roman roads were properly constructed in Britain. Most roads constructed in the Roman era were constructed on alignments, right? Track alignments. Now that's rather interesting. Are they? Am I talking about ley lines? No, I'm talking about trackways to get from A to B. But isn't that what Alfred Watkins is talking about? To get from A to B. We just looked at, I'm not preaching to you, by the way. We just looked at Uffington Horse. We looked at the head going towards this little back entrance into the castle there. Now that's rather interesting. Now, one thing I've not mentioned to Peter, and I'm gonna mention it tonight. Let's just go back to that image. Let's go back to that image. Now, if we if we go back to that one there, unbeknown to lots of you, or beknown to all of you, back in the 1800s and back up until, I think, recent decades, there was the Uffington Fair. And the Uffington Fair would take place within the banks and ditches of Uffington Castle. Now, that's what they call it, Uffington Castle. It would take place within there. And interestingly enough, they would go from that back little um, slip there, at the back there, of, of this, these, these defences at Uffington. Um, Uffington uh, Bank and Ditches, Uffington Castle, or whatever you want to call it. And then people would walk to the, the Uffington horse and scour it. Um, this, this, bear, this bear would be held um, in great... The reverence towards the horse, this this Epona, which has been there for three thousand years, we mentioned that last week, and part of the festivities was to go from that site to the horse to scour it. It was part of the festivities, and actually, Peter picked up with the dowsing rods um, the alignment between the head and uh, the, basically the walkway between there and the head. Is that just coincidence? Let's carry on. Let's see what let's see what our friend Alfred Watkins says about all this. He did he did gain a following. He's still got a massive following, um, and it says a small following. I would disagree with that. If you go to Glastonbury, books on ley lines are everywhere, particularly involving Glastonbury tour. Watkins Watkins' ideas were never accepted by the British archaeological establishment a fact that frustrated him. His critics noted that his ideas relied on drawing lines between sites established at different periods in the past. But that's actually a fault of archaeology as well. Because one thing that we do in archaeology, I, I, I've told you before, one fault of archaeology is that we, we, we take all bits of an archaeological site and we say more or less that they were all created at the same time or give the impression, um, and that's how it always was. That's not the case. That's clearly not the case. But uh, they, they, the archaeologists argued that in prehistory, um, as in the present, it was impractical to travel in a straight line across hilly or mountainous areas of Britain. Actually, when we look at avenues 
and we look at cursus monuments, that's not exactly true. We'll see that next week and we'll see where we go with that. But archaeologists then argue back to that point, back to that sentence, that because you are unable to get the sort of line of sight over mountains and all the rest of it between that monument and this monument, uh, rendering the idea of his lays um, unlikely, the straight line being unlikely. But you'll see something very, very interesting when we look at Tinkinswood burial chamber, but moreover, West Kennet Long Barrow. So let's see. Let's see what there is in, in, in Watkins' ideas. And what we're only going to do, we're just going to look at Watkins' ideas. We're going to do nothing else. But we've had two ideas tonight. We've had Peter's ideas and we've, we've also got, um, we're going to do this Watkins character. So we're going to, we're going to mention the long man of Wilmington in Sussex. Okay, so um, there he is. There's a long man. Um, and there's the long man there. Um, Bill, yes, you went. You went to the long man with me, didn't you? Um, <laughs> well, I went. No, I went to the other one, uh, Carl, with the rather large genitalia. Which one's that? Ah, right. This is the one with the very large genitalia. That one. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, went with you. Yeah, we couldn't get in. It was fenced off, wasn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, um, the the thing is, the man with the very large genitalia. Uh, they've sometimes moved, they've sometimes erased his willy, Bill. Oh. <laughs> um, and there's, there's, now, this this is a very interesting figure, right? Now, what, what we needed to do, what we were trying to do is get to Kathy to lie on that genitalia, and apparently if you lie on the genitalia, you fall instantly pregnant. Oh. Anyway, let's move on, Rog. Don't get too excited. Oh. Alfred Watkins and his book, The Old Straight Track. Now, we've seen we've seen a cover of the straight track as it's been a reprint. So I, the idea of lasers paths traversing the British landscape developed by Alfred Watkins, 1920s. Other people were talking about ley lines. He was an antiquarian, but he was also a wealthy businessman in Hereford. You know what people are like in Hereford? They're very, very strange indeed. According to his account. What's that, Rog? My family came from there, my ma. <laughs> yeah, well, that says it all, doesn't it? Shut up. Yeah, it. Uh, according to his account, he was driving across the hills near Black um, Wardine in um, Herefordshire when he looked across the landscape and observed the way that several features lined up together. He subsequently began drawing mm -hmm. lines across his <laughs> ordnance survey maps, developing the idea that ancient British people had tended to travel in straight lines using mark points along the landscape to guide them. You know, when I think about that, that's quite obvious. And actually, it's that old idea of ancient Rome, isn't it? That um, you've, you've got a ridgeway and the Roman military would follow a ridgeway, but they're not always straight. When you look at the South Wales valleys, for example, the ridgeways are not straight at all. You could say it's a straight line, but they're not straight, straight at all. So we're being really pedantic there. Now, the other thing as well is that I'm, I'm going to chuck something else in here. I wasn't going to mention this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. I'm from time to time, I from times look, from time to time, I I sometimes quote Brian Davis, uh, who was the curator and the first curator of the Pontypridd Museum. And uh, strangely enough, he it, it, it was, it was, it was curator of the museum. Then they changed it to the uh, Pont de Prix Gallery. Then, then they, nobody used to go there. They, they, they called it Pont de Prix Museum again, which is great. Anyway, now he's retired. Now, one day, this is, this is a two-point thing. One day, he sat me down and he said, look, Carl, I'm sick of archaeologists like you um, trying to um, destroy some of these... Um, these pseudo archaeological um, pathways, the, the the way some of us think, and basically, why? Well, then he said, King Arthur, right? Why is it you dismiss King Arthur out of straight away? You just dis uh, I that was then. I don't today, right? And also, what he did say, he used to say that if you now this 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 is an this is an academic now. This is Brian Davis, right? So he's telling me this, and then I'm realizing he's a curator of a museum. He's a very educated man, Brian Davis. 
And then he then he turned around. He said he said to me, he said, look, have you seen those? Have you seen those um, mounds on the Garth Mountain? One or two of them are burial mounds. They're not all burial mounds on the Garth Mountain. If you allow line them up with a mound of Penacoica, yeah, and then you line this up, these different mounds align. And then he said to me that these mounds, Garth Mountain, Penacoica, and other localities, um, follow again follow alignment. So was he was he talking about ley lines? Was he talking about ley lines? That's really, really interesting, right? He didn't give it a name, but he was talking about alignment. And um, do you know what? I'm going to have to put the fire on in this um, in this little place in a minute because it's getting very cold. So here we go. Alfred Watkins, he put forward his idea of ley lines in the 1922 book, Early British Trackways, and then again in greater detail in the 1925 book, The Old Trackway. So in other words, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about this, that his book must have been very successful in 1922 to go to a reprint in nine to go into and write another book on the similar lines in 1925, but it's been reprinted many times. He proposed the existence of a network of completely straight roads that cut through a range of prehistoric Roman and medieval structures. This is going to link in with archaeological fact next week, not the idea of ley lines, but the idea of. Um, Kirk Cursus monuments and avenues. You'll see what I mean for next week. I'm not going into madness. Back to Alfred Watkins. His view, these straight tracks were ancient trade routes. And why, why shouldn't they be? Watkins, Watkins had... Hang on. Here we go. Um, I just lost my, my throat there. Uh, right, so... So Watkins had drawn upon early research to cited the work of astronomer Norman Lockyer, who had argued that ancient alignments might be orientated to sunrise and sunset at solstices. Do you know what? Right. I know a lot of archaeologists who talk about alignments of sunrise and sunset associated with the solstice at Avebury, at um, Woodhenge, at um, the likes of the Ring, Ring of Brodger, all these types of sites. And they talk about sunrise and sunset and all the rest of it. These are archaeologists. These are academic archaeologists. I'm not, I'm not with them on that because when they talk about sunrises and sunsets at at Stonehenge, they always say, there you go, you can see an alignment. And I'm thinking, well, hang on, hang on a minute, the alignments have changed over the past 3,000, 5,000 years. You're, this is madness. And you are academic archaeologists teaching in universities, and you are the same people who was dismissing Alfred Watkins. And you're the same people who are talking about R Romans built roads everywhere when they didn't. So this is why I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of all this. I'm in the middle of all this pain. So here we go. This guy, Norman Locklear, is said to have drawn an, um, a line, a, 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 a line based on his um, astronomy. This is Norman Locklear in 1882. He, he talked about the Skirid Vaur mountain um, northwards to uh, what Arthur Stone would pass over the camp and southernmost point of Hatter Hall Hill, Old Castle, Longtown Castle, um, and Stod Hill Castles. Basically, he, he, he saw an alignment. He saw, saw a, um, an astrological alignment um, to do with sunrises and sunsets. He noted a line. There's a line drawn, uh, which is very interesting. This is in 1882. This is an astronomer saying this, not an archaeologist. So this is, again, where our Watkins comes in. And I know I'm doing a lot about Watkins today, but I'm just doing this little section in front of me. I'm just trying to what, do what I'm trying to do here. Watkins referred to these lines as lays. They've obviously got a lane, a line given to us by Norman Locklear. Now he's saying they're ley lines. He should have called them the Watkins line. The term lay derived from the old English term for a cleared space, with Watkins adopting it for his lines, 
because he found it to be part of the place names of various settlements that were along the lines he traced traced now this is this is really this is really bizarre so so he was coming across sites that use the word lathe but then again if you use that word in regards to Glastonbury and the tour and all the other sites around there you would see the absence of the word lay now here's something else this is this is I'm chucking something else in you years ago years ago there was a chap that was researching my surname and he said that interesting enough, lots of Roman road alignments were associated with a place known as Langford. And I'm just thinking, you know, there's all these links and there's all these things. What do they all mean? Anyway, back to this. Watkins, again in the 1920s, he also observed the reoccurrence of the word coal, C-O-L-E, and the word dod, D-O-D, in English place names thus suggesting that the individuals who established these lines were referred to as Coleman or Dodman. Whew. Right, okay. So so he's coming up with the word lay, which might be associated with some alignments of places, the word coal, mm -hmm. alignments with places, dod, alignments with places. Uh, and then he proposed that the long man of w Wilmington and he's a chalk geoglyph, was a depiction of an individual with measuring equipment that was associated with ley lines. In fact, it's said that those sticks themselves were associated with a technique of alignment, um, not, the li not the sense of a, a line of sight, but those, he's, he's suggesting that those two sticks, that the, the, the giant Akan Abbas, that he's actually holding uh, to do um, with, with, with somebody going out there, um, aligning sites, aligning trackways from monuments. Now, there's one thing about this. We do believe that Wilmington Man may only date actually to the 1500s or maybe the 1600s. But that's what we know now from modern day science. So what do you know what I'm going to do, guys? I, I probably lectured you too much. So I'm going to just read out what I've got in front of me. I'm going to allow your minds to build. And then we're going to go directly into the line of sites in regards to those other two sites that we've mentioned. Now, his ideas were rejected by most experts on pre British prehistory. Most, most. But then again, the, these, uh, these supposed experts um, talk about... Stonehenge and the solstice and the alignments and all these stones, which I don't go with because alignments have changed over a very, very long time. You may all believe that, but I don't. Including both. Uh, so, so basically he would give lectures to small archaeological societies and local enthusiasts and they would say, no, no, we don't believe any of this. But again, these are the same people who believe um, in alignments at solstices and so on. His critics noticed that the straight lines he proposed would have been highly impractical means of crossing hilly or mountainous terrain, um, and that many of the sites he selected as evidence for the lays were of disparate historical origins. I, I think I think what we're saying here, um, our, our friend uh, Watkins may have fallen down with with trying to make things fit his theory, his theory of ley lines. But what he could have done was basically said, "How do you get from A to B?" That's more, that's more of an appropriate alignment. It's the same with those roads that we keep mentioning. Some of Watkins other ideas, such as his belief that widespread forest clearance took place in prehistory rather than later, would nevertheless later be recognized by archeologists. Now that's an interesting point. Now also interesting is what we're gonna do next week, avenues and cursus monuments to get these, these avenues can be three, four, five meters in length and even longer, right? These avenues cleared all the trees along the length um, in prehistory, going back four or five thousand years ago. So that ties in very nicely with what, what Watkins is talking about. So that, so the tree bit is correct. 
this is in the 1920s. Part of part of archaeologists objections was their belief that prehistoric Britons would not have been sophisticated enough to produce such accurate measurements across the landscape. Absolute tosh. Absolute tosh. Because our prehistoric ancestors were very powerful in understanding the dynamism of our landscape, how the landscape worked, because if they were unable to understand our landscape, we would not be here today. How do all these how do all the sites at Durrington Walls, um, the site known as Stanton Drew, how do all these sites actually work if you ignore the ability of our ancestors to create them in the first place? British archaeologists were then overwhelmingly committed to ideas of cultural diffusionism and thus unwilling to, to enter the ideas that our uh, Watkins is offering us. So what we're talking about there, what we're talking about is something that we're doing in our main classes, which you all take part in, except for Richard. And uh, in, in, the, in the main classes we, 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 that we're talking about, uh, we, we're talking about archaeology uh, is opening up to the idea of determinism. What determinism is, is you get prehistoric ancestors developing in different parts of the world at different times. Not everything comes out of Africa, but everything, this idea of diffusionism is dangerous. The idea of diffusionism is, is, is to root of everything that we could say is racist in modern day society. Um, Western society gave the world civilization. You say that to somebody in Africa, you, they would slit your throat. You say that to a Native mm. American, you would be um, overboard into the brink, right? Which is completely wrong. We have determined our own advance as a, as a human population all over the globe. It's not come from one bent. 1926, there were growing, there were some more, there were people, slowly but surely, he was, he was building a following. And again, you're building a following because you're able to sell books. Now, the, the one th I, I'm going to, Shout, shout my own thing. I came up with um, Romans in South Wales at May last year. We sold out 550 copies. We came out with a reprint because people believed in the book. People wanted the book. It was recommended. It got out there. So we're, we're in the process of selling another 250. So as an, as an author as well, I know that if, if your ideas are popular, people buy your books. And that's what I'm saying with Watkins. He wouldn't be able to come out with another book unless people actually bought it. Um, so there was a growing group of enthusiasts going out there in places like Glastonbury, advancing this idea of, of, of these ley lines. And there, there was also, he came up with another book as well. He came up with another book. He came up with another book. One of the books that he came up with was something called The Lay Hunter's Manual. Proponents of Watkins ideas sent in letters to the archaeologist O.G.S. Crawford. Now, O.G.S. Crawford was big. O.G.S. Crawford was was a scientific archaeologist who was very much into aerial photography, very much into landscape archaeology. Now, interesting enough, I'm going to say this. You can't you can't have ley lines without landscape archaeology. What is landscape archaeology? In the 1920s, archaeologists were only interested in lots of archaeologists, not OGS Crawford, may I say. Most archaeologists were into the idea of individual archaeological sites, i.e. you've got Stonehenge, you've got, you've got the likes of um, the monuments around Stonehenge being individual sites, and you've got um, Woodhenge and so on and so on. They, they would look at these sites and they would say, that's a site. Oh, let's look at Stonehenge. They would very rarely link the two sites together, but Crawford would. Now, again, this this so Crawford should be the type of person who could have believed in what uh, Watkins was saying. Crawford filed these letters under a section of his archive titled "Crankies," and was annoyed that educated people believed such ideas when they were um, demonstratively incorrect. But from which point of view do we say that? He refused to publish an advert for the old straight track in antiquary, at which Watkins became very bitter towards him. Now, you know, 
that's 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 happened with um that that i can i can remember years ago i come out i come out with my first publication and and somebody wouldn't um sell it and, and you think yeah okay but yeah I, I i can sell my book um he eventually went on to sell his his books um he came up with another book in in 1932 known as archaic tracks around cambridge so in other words it's expanded eventually down to glastonbury by other people but he died in 1935 on the 7th of april now the one thing is well is is that um a, a club a, a club grew and a club grew looking at his ideas it was disbanded in 1948 but um there's um somebody known as clive ruggles um it's a ch name that I've come across. He's an archaeoastronomer. He's the one, he's one of those that would go into alignments with solstices and all the rest of it. Um, he noted that after the 1920s, ley lines soon faded into obscurity. However, the historian Ronald Hutton, big historian today, similarly noted that there had been a virtual demise in the idea by the 1950s, in part due to a natural weariness with a, 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 a spent enthusiasm. Um, I'm actually going to say that that was up until the 1950s. But since the 1960s, the Earth Mystery Movement and Ley Lines and all these other things has become massive in centres like Glastonbury. So Ley Lines is very, very much alive. Now, I'm going to take a slip. I'm going to take a slip of my tea. And um, Bill would say at this point, should we look at Ley Lines? Should we ask questions about Ley Lines? I'm not going to do any more about ley lines tonight. I want to do a little bit more about line of sight. I want to do a little bit more about what I've experienced. Now, okay. if Carl, we, um, um, what I'm going to do, we're going to listen to what you've got to say, Pete, but nobody else, right? So, but at the end, Pete, you can't say anything more about ley lines, okay? So go for it, Pete. Well, when we were at the Uppington Castle, and uh, I see I took the uh, the twig from the white twig from uh, Michelle and tried and it re reacted quite seriously. And we couldn't had no idea why it would react as it did. We talked about ley lines, but we didn't know anything about them at that point. Yeah. Until I went to a Giver mine down in Cornwall. It's a tin mine and in the gift shop there. There was a book on ley lines. Was it this book? Though? Was in it was... the book on ley lines, was it, it indicated that through the Uppingham port, there was a definite ley line. That was in the book. It wasn't that book. It was a different book. But I would like to look at that book and see. Yeah. And, and actually, Pete, I, to be honest with you, I, I would recommend all of you get that book. Not, not yeah. because I'm trying to lecture to you. I would say get that book. And then pick it apart, and then come back to me, and and you know we could we could look at that in the next next few weeks and see what you you thought about it. Yeah. So that 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 would be very very valuable, Pete. Okay, very very. We know possible. about dowsing. And yeah. dow dowsing has been a way of looking for for water and for uh, underground um, amenities throughout, and so uh, we know that is successful. But as it regards dowsing and finding ley lines, until we. Until that incident in that uh, Uppingham Castle, I, I, I had no idea. But now we do, and that's the important thing. Yep. Oh, so, yes. so what what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to we're going to now look at another phenomenon, and, and we got. I think I think I can do this in ten minutes, and then we can have a a, a nice, interesting look. There's so, one line you need to look at was Maze How, and the uh, the the three. Uh, rock uh, configuration just opposite um, Maze Howe entrance. Oh, go on, Pete. Let's do it. Well, that on uh, Maze Howe, there's a across from Maze Howe, well, about half a mile away, there's uh, three rocks, two up, two upstanding, and another one which was is stood in the middle. When the uh, when the rising sun points the uh, the shadow of the standing rock through the other two. It points directly at the entrance to Maze Howe. <laughs> um, and basically, oh God, Pete, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? We've got uh, Maze Howe over there. Uh, we've got Barnhouse. And you're talking about the stones of Stennis. Yeah, the three that's stones it. up right? Yeah. yeah, that's it. 
So yeah. yes, that that's basically the thing. We we we've got this. Um, now, what what I what I need to do? What I need to do is make a comment myself, right? I I I I've dragged you into this today. I I I, I I've I've got my thoughts and views. Now we're going to go on to this. We're going to go on to this in a moment, right? But let let's talk about my thoughts and what I feel about ley lines. The the, the point is, is that there are things in archaeology that we don't rightly understand. Now, for me personally, I, I would say we need an absolute overhaul uh, of the ideas associated with places like Stonehenge. The ideas, because basically it's, it's the same thing all the time. Nobody's questioning the lack of science involving um, solstices and all the rest of it to do with Stonehenge. Nobody turns around and says, well, actually, you can't have that alignment today. Um, which is the same alignment in the past because things have changed, right? There, there are other things at play, right? And then, then we talk about then we talk about why can't you have alignments, as Brian Davis said, associated with burial chambers across the landscape? Why can't you have that? So what I've done, I've I've, I've not one theory, and I've said why not? Now, you know, I, I've I, I see archaeology as being a developing. Um, science and a developing humanity is de developing pseudoscience some as we some science can be wrong some science can be faulted but back to why we're doing all this we 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 haven't mentioned tim ingold and the sense of the line the sense of the line is incredibly important to humanity going in a direction moving from one moment to the next seasonal um, things going around, um, how the tapestry of the landscape works. Um, and, you know, there's there's this there's this idea that you that people like going for walks and, and they, they like going up a hill and they like going down a hill and they, they like doing this. And they like this. Everything needs to be in order. Um, and that's following a line. That's following a process. Um, and this the one thing is, why not? Why, why, why can't you have a concept of the ley line? But if you're going to have a concept of the ley line, does it need to be a concept that they had in the past or a concept that we have now? Um, and there's no reason why you can't. Let's let's look into my area. There's no reason why you can't have a Roman site there and a Roman site over there with no road between them. But the 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 course that people may have traveled from that point to that point may no longer be there. But there is a line in the past. There's a line in the sand that's been drawn at some point. So we'll end that there. What we're going to do now, we're going to look at this site. Now, one, one, thing, one thing about West Kennet Long Barrow is that West Kennet Long Barrow is, is very near Silbury Hill. And you can see that there is West Kennet Long Barrow and Silbury Hill. And there's the A4. Now, hopefully, um, this should. Oh, hang on a minute. I think uh, on, what we got there. We're, we're there, there. There we go. We're, we're looking. I, I just check, clicked on this. We're, we're looking actually um, at the burial chamber. So if we actually go back again, now what you can see is a line. You can see West Kennet Long Barrow Layby. There's a line. Now. The way I need to do this is I need to go back out a minute. I need to um, get a, I need to, I need to chuck a map on you. So I thought I had a map on you. So if you can just bear with me a minute. Uh, West Kennet, uh, Long, if I can type, I thought I had a map or, or something like that map. Let's type that in there because this will make a little bit more sense. There we go. Let's see if we can get this up there. Oh, map, map, map. Okay. Uh, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to go with that one on the left there. But actually, that looks pretty good there. Um, there we go. Now, I, I love maps like this. It's just you can get lost in it. Look at that. It's great. Everything's on there. Love it. And I, actually, this is going to throw you a little bit because because what we do have, we, we have the West Kennet Avenue that we will be looking at next week. But we've got Silbury Hill there, and what we've got, we've got this, all these things incredibly placed within a very, very complicated landscape. And 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. You you know that my interpretation of a line it can be um, either um, straightish like this or it can be um, curved like this. Two avenues. That's what we're gonna do next week. Now, what what does happen? Is what does happen? And I, my, my my phone has just jumped out of its thing. Uh, hang on a minute. Now, what does happen? Hang on. I'm struggling a minute. I've just uh, my technology's just. Seller tapes come away. Uh, what does happen when you come out, when you jump out of the car, right? Um, and you go there, you jump out of the car by the, by the lay-by. There's a little gate. Now, when you, when you jump out of the car in that lay-by, uh, you, can, you, you can't see the long barrow. Right, so you you can't see it. It's it's not there. It, it, you can't see it. It 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 it's it's absent. Right, but if you went a bit further, if you went if you went a bit further up this slope, you'd be able to see the long barrow. Right now, there's a point to this. In other words, if you went a bit further up this hill where the L is, you'd be able to see West Kennet Long Barrow. You'd be able to see it. You, you you'd be able to see it from a distance. You'd be able to see the barrow. That's the point. Um and. And we will we will be doing this in a lot of detail when 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 we get really into the prehistoric stuff. So so at that L at the point where the L is, you can see the West Kennet Long Barrow. And it, and back in the past, back um, five thousand years ago, uh, it would have been white. It, it uh, the, the white chalk and the, and the flint would have would have been iridescent within the landscape. Would have been iridescent against the moon. Would have been iridescent against the sun. It would just just gleamed right. Now you can see it from a distance. So when you get to the car park, you can't see the West Kennet Long Barrow has disappeared. It's gone, right? Now, the point is this. How do you know the barrow is there? How, how do you know it's there? Well, you've got to follow the footpath. And, and you're, you're leading block. Now, as you, as you go, you go down into a little bit of a dip and you, and you keep rising. And then you rise where that kink is there. And you, you keep going. You keep walking. You keep walking. And you, and you just go over the brow of the hill and suddenly in the distance, about 100 metres in front of you is the long barrow, right? Um, you can see it. Um, and this is the point. Things in the past um, are sometimes meant to be seen one moment and meant to disappear another moment. It's, it's that sense of majesty. Just think what our ancestors would have thought when they stood at that L, they stood and they could see the barrow. And as they're going to the, towards the barrow, the barrow disappears. And, and they're just thinking, well, where is it? And people are saying, have faith, keep walking, keep walking in that line. And eventually, if you keep walking in that line, you'll get to the barrow. Now, that's a line. That's an alignment. Now, do you know when we were looking at the, the ley lines just a few moments ago, we, we were talking about Watkins and we were talking about people you know, people saying that he made up these alignments between this and he made up the alignments between that and all the rest of it, right? Um, how, how, did, uh, how did our ancestors know to create these alignments in the first place? Where are we going with this? But if we take, our way, if we take ourselves away from uh, Watkins and we take ourselves away from this idea of the ley lines, we go back to the sense of the archaeology and we go to the sense of the mystery. Now, as you're walking and you're walking down that hill from the L and you walk down to that little, little dip, the uh, uh, West Kennet Long Barrow disappears and you start climbing up, you start climbing up, you don't know where it is, you keep climbing up and usually there's mist, there's a sense of mystery about it, there's a sense of hidden nature about it. You get to the bow of the hill about 100 metres in front of you, you can actually see it. And even then, if it's a bit misty that day, you might not be able to see the long barrow. So this is really important. This is a sense of um, line of sight. So you've got a line of sight from the L. You can see it. You can see the long barrow from other localities around the landscape. Hidden lines, hidden alignments, the sense of Tim Ingall's line. This is very, very important. So what we're going to look at is just have a little look at some of these um, images. And it would be really good to maybe look at this landscape again. But we will be looking at this landscape again because... Next week, we're going to be looking at the West Kennet Avenue. We're going to be looking at the Brett Bre Bre Hams um, Tan Avenue. We'll be looking at the avenue at Stonehenge. We're looking at one or two other river avenues. We'll be looking at Cursus Monuments as well. Brilliant. That's what we're going to be doing next week. So we'll look at a few images now. And I don't want us to, they don't want us to go to Tinkins Wood, right? Before, before my mind burns out. 
Um, and then uh, we're just going to go over to questions, right? So, so one one thing. So the, I I have experienced this many times. It it it's it, it's magic. You 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 almost get out your car and and you know and and you do walk down. You're going into the dark and 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 you can see this thing when you get to the brow of the hill. Is is magic. But from a distance, you can see it. That's the point. From a distance, you can see West Ken at Long Barrow, but close up, you can't see us there. I think that's amazing. I think that's that's absolutely amazing. Am I making too much of this? I don't think so. I don't think I am. So anyway, let's just um, let's just uh, look at a few images. Um, we, we'll just uh, hang on a minute. Let's just get rid of that. And there we go. A few nice images of our of our barrow. Uh, uh, there we go. So we've got these beautiful stones sticking out. You could see the, the barrow from various different distances. But when you get close to it, you can't see it. There's a mound that tapers off from West Kent at Long Barrow. Uh, over a hundred odd metre mound that, that, that sort of slenders off along the ridge. Again, we can do that in the future. When you go to the, the barrow, you can see um, the, the, um, the, the stones within the barrow itself. And all the wonderful artefacts found at West Kent at Long Barrow. And uh, from the barrow, you can actually see the top of uh, Silbury Hill. So, you know, you can see things from the barrow and there's a sense of mystery about it. So what I'm going to do now, before we're going to do that, mention Silbury Hill and the next site that we're going to look at is this one, Tinkinswood Burial Chamber. Now, I don't know if any of you have actually ever been to Tinkinswood Burial Chamber, but again, we will look at this in great, great detail in the next in quite some months time, but we'll be visiting this site again. We'll be tearing apart archaeology. We'll be looking at it. But interestingly enough, when you park uh, approximately 300 metres away from Tinkinswood, it's the same thing. You can't see the barrow. You, you can't see it. It's not just hidden from just hidden by a row of trees. You can't see it anyway. Right. You can't see it. You can't see Tinkinswood burial chamber. It, this this big thing that is there. It's physically there but you can't see it from the car park. Um, and, and the same thing happens with, with Tinkins with Burial Chamber. When you, when you, go, to, to, when, when you go to the car park, uh, you, you park your car up and, and there's a little sign saying Tinkins with Burial Chamber. Surely it's there, right? When you go and see a castle, for example, you can see the castle in front of you, like Raglan Castle. My God, you can't miss that, can you? You can see that for miles around. Chep, um, Caffilly. I know it's in the middle of a town, but if the town wasn't there, you can see it for mid miles around. But Tinker, Tinker's with Burial Chamber is, is a sense of huge mystery about it. It's it's wonderful sight. And, you know, and again, I, I'm going to I'm going to set the scene and then 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 we'll call it a day and we'll we'll, we'll go for questions. So what the, the, the one thing that I do is is my ghost walks, as 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 you know, and uh, I'm going to mention that we've got a ghost walk in 10 days time, which is on the 18th at Lantwick Major. But whenever we do the ghost walks at, at Tinkinswood, we get out the car, we, we, we go down um, to the bottom and you've got a little bit of a river, and you've got a little bit of a bridge and then you go to the top of the ridge. And when you get to the top of the ridge, just before you get to the top of the ridge, you can't see Tinkins with burial chamber. I know it's in the dark, you can't see it. And actually in the light, you can't see it either. But when you just go a little bit further, you can see Tinkins with burial chamber seem seemingly occurs. It seem, seem, it's like, an, ab it's like a, an abhorrent aberration in front of you. Um, a mirage of, 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 of a deep sense of prehistory. And again, that's you can think of the idea of line of sight because... There are other burial chambers and there's talk as well. Bill mentioned it about maybe an alignment, not uh, maybe an alignment between Tinkinswood Burial Chamber and St. Lithens and St. Lithens and other monuments is worth thinking about. Knackered now. So what we're going to do now, um, I, I will, uh, Pete, can, Pete can say something. Right? I just wanted to keep questions um, sort of succinct and um, allowing. Uh, so we got, we, we're okay at this minute because the girls haven't turned up. So uh, Roger, anything you'd like to say? Then we'll go to Steve and then we'll go to Pete, Bill and uh, Richard at the end. Rog. I'm going to sign off in a minute for a few things, but basically it's still a bit confusing how people are saying about the dowsing, which is one thing, yes, a localised thing. But I'm not quite sure what Leylands would be otherwise, other than root baths. 
still don't see it. Yeah, I, I, I get, I can see. Say, well, as an important side, there's a line to it and all this, but that's a route map, not a, a line of energy, because remember, the energy in the Earth is a magnetic field, huge back magnet, you can see the fire in the middle of it all. And those lines are curved, straight lines are an invention of man. They yes. Exactly. Okay, a rock might split, you might get a little bit of a line, but that, that's yes. the money. So these lines are sort of lay, uh, lay lines for me, just root maps. Now, as well, alongside this, that with the dowsing, I said it with Linda when we went to the uh, site before. With the, I remember uh, Linda is so distinct. Yeah, as the group, yeah, as the, as the group yeah. yeah. Then there's something going on there with that, which is something different. So I'm not sure why that happened, but it's certainly a, another phenomenon. That's where I see. I, I think, Rod, that the point is, is, it, is it, it's trying to differentiate between the ley line and the dowsing rod. Um, the where dowsing rod does something, ley lines are just root map line going. Oh, that's interesting to me. But what, 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 I've, what I've seen is the idea of the dowsing rod and the ley line and, and the energy being exactly the same thing. And if you start to look at it that way, it makes a little bit more sense than just a route map and a line between one site and another. Yeah, but the straight lines are not natural in nature. We're talking about nature. They're not natural energy. in nature. The yeah, energy, uh, energy is, comes when it comes, but the magnetic field of the Earth consists of curved lines and they not a nice deep little line on a draftsman board or a... You know, it's, it's just following that energy, and I think maybe we sh maybe that's what that's what the idea of the ley line should be following an energy, which which um, as as I keep saying, a line a, a line to me um, can be wiggly waggly or can be curved because um, you are right. The idea, the concept of the line is 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 abhorrent in nature. They, 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 there is, yeah, yeah. So you got to go with you, Rog. Yes, I'm gonna have a bit of food soon and all that. A busy day, okay. gardening and stuff. Without the cutting done, there's three surgeons being here, one thing together. So you know, time okay, to Rog. relax. So thanks, Carl. See you next week. All be well. See you next week, Rog. Okay, folks. See you all. Take, Take care. Take care, babe. See you next week, Rog. Right. Bye, bye. Right. Bye bye, Rog. Bye bye. Right. Um, who's next, Steve? Um, I'm not going to ask you if I've changed your mind or anything. What do you think now? Um, two questions. <laughs> To ask um, firstly, Alfred Watkins' book you 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 mentioned is that the best? Yes, uh, A lines book. To... Yes, because because he's the one he's the one who come up with the idea. So go with the person who come up with the idea. If you don't go, if you go and get a book in Glastonbury, right? Hang on yeah. a minute. Yeah, the, the problem is I, I I've got sort of a book I could have grabbed there, but if you go and get a book in Glastonbury written by anybody, they're they're going to be nicking their ideas off Watkins anyway. So you may as well go for Watkins. Okay. Um, go for the source, and uh, what I'm. So that was your first point. I maybe my question of you might be answered if you go for it. So, so I, I can understand. I understand far more. I can certainly. I, I take the point around um, ley lines being points between between significant historical or cultural places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and I, I accept the point that they're not necessarily straight. But, but I suppose the follow-up to that is, how was that developed? I mean, it must have been developed over, over a long period of time. And secondly, at what point did we lose it? Um, did, run, run that part, run, can you just run, run that? Can you just bear with me one second? Hang on, one second. Just the, just my uh, my my power was um, zooming in and out. The uh, I just gotta I just gotta uh, plug something in a minute. Bear, bear with me a minute. Bear with me. I just, my my power was going. Right. I was zooming in and out on that. Can you just run that question past me again? Sorry, run it past me again. Yeah, it, it was just in 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 two parts. The first part was I can understand the point that. Um, points between uh, specific, maybe very historical, very ancient, very um, prehistoric sites, there would be some form of um, kind of sign signposting they would have to do. Mm. So on, a, on a previous, uh, a previous generations, these uh, yeah. better. 
but I, I'm still by the energy thing. Right. So, oh. so, so the question is: is where did we lose the concept of linking things together? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. When, when, when did we change? When did we change um, the madness from not trusting ourselves to modern technology? And in 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 many ways. Um, the idea of seasons and following the seasons of a far as a farmer has never changed. That's always been a leap of faith. And um, I don't think we've ever lost that. It's just that most of us have lost it. But I think the connection deep down uh, with, with those links of, of, of energy and alignments of things in the past, um, uh, most of us have lost it, but some of us is still with us today. Okay. Okay. Is, is it, does that answer the point? Yeah. It sort of answers the point. I, 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 I would like to, I, I'd like to read the book. I'll get hold of the book, and the book first, just because. But I still, I still struggle a bit with. Um, I understand the point around energy, and I understand that, that how that dowsing can can do both. It's not simply one aspect or the other. But by the same token, I'm not. Uh, I'm still not convinced. Right. I, okay. The the. the... The, the thing is, what we need to do is, is accept that people in the past did things differently. Absolutely. And, and, may, and maybe the point is, if we want to say it this way, the idea of ley lines is the same idea of um, archaeologists talking about solstices and, and, and all the rest of it, right? Um, we, need more, we need more concepts because we're restricted by a small number of concepts and so, and if ley lines doesn't work and if archaeology looking at um archaeoastronomy doesn't work in my view where do i go and um i i go with the idea that everything links and goes within lines and and, and that sort of sequence you know everything's everything's multiply complex within the landscape when you've got the idea of um ingold's tarscape where where everything's intermingled, there's no such thing as a line between anything, and it's all um, it's all created and it's all muddled up, and that's what we need to look at. And maybe we're trying to find, we're trying to simplify it, and we shouldn't. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, I yeah. I, I, so next week we're going to be looking at avenues and cursus monuments. So okay, are we done, Steve? Yeah, we are. Thank you. Good. Right, uh, Bill. Bill, go for it. And uh, yeah. be, be very be very wary, Bill, but we're running out of time. Go on, Bill. No, no, I'm going to take my time. Isn't there an easy and obvious exercise we can all do, which I think we've missed, to, to harden up our opinion of whether ley lines are true or not? So if you take an ordnance survey map and spread it out of your area, identify all the ancient churches, the barrows, and the prehistoric oh, yeah. etc., and you take a rule and put a series of lines be between all of them, what do you get? Well, I've done it in the past and I've come to the conclusion it's indeterminate. Because it, if, 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 if there's, a line, there's always a line from A to B, yes. if you extend it and it hits C, you think that oh, there's something in this, but that's not always the case, you know. No, so, it's not. I'm not convinced, <laughs> we'll ever be convinced at the moment, Carl. But the line of sight is very important. Obviously these, these uh, ancient settlements, um, we're, we're built on high spot so they could see the neighbouring uh, um, uh, settlement, etc. And who's know to say there wasn't some sort of early semaphore system they could use to actually communicate with each other. And there so, is one other thing, Bill. Right? You know, you were talking side, about yes. you you're yeah. talking about uh, you're talking about church one and church two and church three aligning, but then you get to church four, it doesn't align. Who's to say that um, church one and two and three were meant to align, and but the fourth one wasn't? Well, exactly. You just proved my theory. No, nothing's been proved. So, so in concerned. other words, for some areas of, of a spiritual guidance, it, that's the way it may have been. For other areas, it wasn't meant to be like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. it's a, it's a, Bill, it's the same thing as saying everyone on the planet speaks English. They don't. No, the, the, the picture you've shown of West Kennet and Silbury Hill and yeah. all the other cairns, etc. That's a jumble, that is. No one can convince me that you could put lines to any of those it doesn't mean but, anything but, but some archaeologists have <laughs> good luck to them <laughs> we can all have an own opinion can't we <laughs> and this is why i'm just doing ab the two avenues there next week and a couple of other avenues in the country and you, yeah. you'll see my point with that so okay. right anyway is that it bill 
Yeah, thanks, Carl. Um, okay, uh, Pete, um, again, wary of time, Pete, go for it. Uh, well, to start with, that when we were at the, uh, the Uppington Castle and uh, Michelle came up with this Y road, it's the one the kids had picked up and was playing with it, and she was pointing it. I said, well, lend it to me, and we all dowsed dow with it. We had no idea what could possibly be there. Yeah. And we didn't expect it to act, to actually uh, to, to react, but it reacted quite violently. Yes. And in several times, not just once, but several times, but why? And we didn't know at that point until I got hold of the book and looked at it, and it said there was a ley line directly through that entrance. And that no, we was had no... long after we'd actually been there and done it. So we had no form of knowledge, but we were able to track something, exactly. Uh, and with dowsing, there, I mean, there is no, no scientific answer to dowsing. And I had a couple of scientists out on flat home there, and uh, we had dowsing rods, and we asked these scientists, oh, they, they said it was rubbish. You can, you know, there's nothing in it. It's, it's completely unbelievable. I said, yeah. well, try it. it. Take the dowsing rods, hold them in front of you, and walk across there. And as they walked across, so the, 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 uh, the dowsing rods crossed. And we knew that under there was the, the tunnel from the old uh, lead mine. Hey, Pete, yeah. can I come in here? Um, I've seen dowsing working. Yeah. And the way it works, Housing works, yeah. Yeah, if if you if you're um dows over um electric cable, obviously the yeah. copper rods yeah. will pick it up will. the electric magnetic field. But if it's a pipe uh, full of water running, that generates up the static as well, and it picks up that as well. But yeah, so I think it's connected to any sort of a um uh, latent um uh, uh magnetic field in the earth flowing one way to the other. But there was nothing like that at the castle. No, I know that that's the odd thing about it. That was the odd thing about it. No, you yeah. couldn't understand. You've got to keep an open mind so about it. Yeah, I agree. So positive. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to keep an open mind. So we will be doing yeah. dousing in the future. So uh yeah. right. So uh Pete, have you done your bit? Because yeah. um we gotta we gotta go over to um Richard. Is that okay? Good. Anyway, thanks for that. And, and Richard, anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I'm sort of still a bit of skeptic on it, you know. Um I could see sort of certain people being able to pick up like Bill was on about sort of magnetic fields and things you know because even where rocks have been heated they become magnetic so you could imagine over thousands of years yes some you, you of could... these things could be picked up by certain people who were you know will pick up these things you probably haven't got a chance now because power lines and pylons and everything could just mess everything up but you can, can imagine I, can I... years you know that people could sort of pick up these things a, a sort of sixth sense where you could pick up magnetic sort of lines and you possibly get it especially where there's water has run where it's sort of picked up minerals and sort of metal deposits you know metal ores and sort of laid them along the bed of whatever it's flowing along and someone could sort of pick up you know this sort of magnetic uh, sort of charge, you know, like almost like electric charge, you know, it's under our feet. So, uh, do, do, do you know, do you know what, right? That 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 actually makes perfect sense. And uh, and and the one the one thing is, well, the one thing that we do know about is that uh, I, I could just tell you this at Delphi, where the Oracle is, um, that there is a fault line running through it, and if some and and you could. There, you know, it was a lot more potent in the past and gases would come up through the fault line, right? So you could have people saying, oh, if you follow the fault line, that's really magical. And there's an alignment of it or it goes around the corner or whatever, right? Um, and this sense of magnetism and this sense of following something under the surface that they don't innately know, I think, you, yeah, that I would I would say that would be really important. Um, you, you could have... You could have a, a seam of, of of gold under the surface, and you could you could know for, from some kind of connection that 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 you can follow that, and and I, I think that is more potently readily understandable as an alignment or a ley line, if you want to call it. And you are dead right, to Richard. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, it's just it's just trying to pick up something. 
something more practical. It, it you know, people knowing things. It's it's the same as it's the same as dousing. Right, people know there's water under the surface. Right, um, and uh, because and, and they know it's there. And these little twig things and they indicate water. Why can't other energy be picked up in the same way? And this is what people have been arguing with the likes of Glastonbury and so on. So that would make perfect sense. So, um, right, anyone want to say anything else? Yeah, good night. <laughs> You're off now. Okay, then. So everybody <laughs> next week, we're going to be looking at, at um, the, the alignments at, um, at the avenues at West Kennet Long Barrow and, and um, Brock Hampstead going to um Avery and we'll be looking at an example at Stonehenge as well and uh, some other cursus monuments so uh, so in other words um Steve uh, if you haven't got anything else to say Bill anything else to say Richard and uh, Peter um if you haven't got anything else to say we'll see you all next week and thank you for joining us hopefully we've learned something tonight thank you very much thanks guys bye 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 What's that? Has Michelle still got her dowsing rods. She still got the dowsing rods in the in the house, and um, yeah, she used them. <laughs> she she has used them a few times, and she's got copper ones as well. Good. So yeah, she has used them. Yes, she has. She has. Good night. Then. Night night, Peter. Night night. Is Richard still there? Oh, Richard. Night night, Rich. And um, Carl. Night night, Rich. So Richard, we'll uh, see you on Friday. Hopefully. Yeah, I still don't know about Friday, Carl, because I like I'm waiting for a phone call from the doctor and oh, black know when it's gonna, you know, as long as it comes in early in the morning, I'll be all right. Okay, okay, good. I've got to speak to her, and I, you know, it's like now. Okay, okay, okay then. Uh, so I'll give you a ring anyway. I'll probably, you know. Okay, whatever good. Whatever happens anyway. Okay, I, I appreciate that, Richard. Hopefully, hopefully see you soon, okay? Yeah, because I've been working on some stuff for you as well, so I'll have to... Yeah, we need it. I've got another long list as well. Okie dokie. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. We've got Porth Kerry in the Baron District this week as well, so... Yeah, yeah. I've seen that oh, you've seen, it. You've, seen, you've seen it. I know. Yeah, I see. yeah. Okay then, Rich. Hope you keep me in touch and let me know on Friday, okay? All right. Cheers, Carl. Take care. No, no, Richard. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. No, no. No, no. No, no. Um, Carl, I can't get hold of Pat. Um, and Anne said her laptop is updating. And I, I know hopefully Richard's still in my class um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so Richard, far. Uh, but I, I, I tell you what. Okay, what I'm going to do, right, um, uh, I think I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, I'm going to basically, I, I've got to, um, sort out the heating here a minute, but I'm going to mention that uh, there's been lots of messages online tonight. In fact, there's been a lot. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I clicked onto your live for about split seconds and saw that it was popping off full of people. Um, at that yeah, point. There's, there's been a Brian Evans. Thanks for joining us. He says, Nostar from Clinically, stay safe. He's been listening a fair bit. He basically says, um, I have worked next to Uffington Horse on the Ridgeway. We've got another guy on here as well. I have no idea what that's about. Um, he was on about um, talking about Stone Age Man. Carl, I would love to have a guide that uh, bring the knowledge back. The Ridgeway runs a long way, both in time and distance, not the way um, fitting up the police call, it making the evidence fit the crime. All right. Uh, we've been waiting for this uh, change in paradigm for a long time. We are not stupid. We need the truth. I'm on a mission to make smiles. Um, I like... I don't know. I was working on a building site as security in the night. I felt the energy on the ridgeway. The lines are not straight. And we mentioned that. Um, that follow the earth energy lines like rivers, but the geo energy love it. And um, oh, and uh, I'm still here. And that's brilliant. So uh, if you want to stay on, um, Brian, it's great to have you there. Um, it's good to be on a mission. So, Brian, what I'm going to say is that um, we're going to end this recording now. Oh, and then we've got um, Jessica. What are you looking at tonight, Jess? Welsh bitches. Welsh bitches. No, Welsh bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so, so what I'm, what, uh, what, what I'm going to say is, uh, Brian Evans, what we're going to do, we're going to end this uh, recording now. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to set up a new recording. So if you want to come back on, on my channel um, in a moment, 
uh, we'll get that set up. So I'm going to end this recording. And uh, Brian Evans, please feel free to like and subscribe and, and, and to join. So we're going to end this recording now. Um, uh, those that have joined us on 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 um, on YouTube, it's great. Thanks for joining us. So I'm, I'm going to end this recording now. One, two, three.